Well friends, welcome back to Michigan here at Traverse City State Park. We are going to see if getting out of here was as complicated as getting in. So we're going to try to hook up the truck at an angle here and we'll just boogie on out of here hopefully without hitting any trees or anything. We've got that one to contend with over there. Over here we shouldn't have much to deal with as far as tail swing goes, maybe just the electrical post, but as soon as we get moving I think we'll be out of the way of it. it out of Traverse City State Park. Actually, quite a bit easier than getting in, wouldn't you say? Uh, getting out of the site was easier. I don't know if getting out of the state park campground itself was easy. That's on a really busy road, so if you can avoid it, don't turn left out of there while you're hooked up. Well, luckily, we were able to turn right, but... Yeah, it was hard to make a left yesterday without the trailer, so I couldn't imagine doing it with it. We're headed north, though. Crossing the bridge into the Upper Peninsula, we've decided to take the scenic route, US 31, kind of up the coast. A little bit different than what we did going up here the other day. Hopefully we'll see some more water along the way and cross that big old bridge. My first time driving across this thing too. I've been a passenger once, but you've never been to Michigan at all, right? So you've never been up here? Mm -mm. Nope, so this is all new. We're gonna cross another smaller bridge in Charlevoix too, I think, so that'll be interesting. Yep, should be fun, and then we're headed to Taquamon, talk whatever it's called, some waterfall up here that I can't pronounce. It's a really pretty structure going through. I think it's really neat. I think it's one of the longer suspension bridges that there is. So pretty neat to be able to pull the camper across it. We are, I don't know, another hour away from our destination. So we got a good ways to go, but we're gonna find a rest stop here shortly. Take a little bit of a break and uh, catch up with you over at whatever the name of this state park is. Superior for the channel uh, and there are signs around here that say you got to watch for moose on the road so I don't know do you think we'll find a moose? Mm, I hope so but um, not likely. We're gonna seek out a moose. If there's more than one moose are they meese? Nope. No they are not. This must be a huge state park because We've been in it for like 20 miles already, in and out of some towns and stuff. I'm not exactly sure what all is considered part of the state park, but...
Friends, good morning and welcome to our campsite here at Taquamanon Falls State Park, otherwise known as Root Beer Falls. We're going to give you a little bit more details on this campground later, but for now we're headed over to the locks at Sault Ste. Marie and we're going to share that adventure with you. So let's get in the truck and let's get going. So we have made it to Sault Ste. Marie to where the locks are. I want to go to the visitor center, try to learn about the locks. I know this is a big operation in this area. What do you know about it? Anything? No, nothing. nothing. What about the parking here? So we had to pay at a meter somehow. What app did you have to use? This is the Passport app. I had it on my phone already because we had to use it at Johnstown once. So. And it was what, like a dollar for an hour? Yes. And so uh, you just do it all through your phone and you can add you can add time, but this is a two hour time limit here, so the most I can add is another hour. But I don't think we're going to spend much more than an hour in the visitor center. We'll put the drone up here real quick. You can't fly over the locks, but you can fly it around here, so I should be able to get up good enough ways to be able to see the locks and the bridge and everything like that. So it appears there's some sort of viewing deck over here, so we're going to try to see what sort of view we can get. But if you don't know, the locks are because the Great Lakes is at different levels, and so the boats have to be able to go up and down to get from one to the other, and the locks is how they do that, very similar to like canals back in the day. We've shown you some on the channel, like the uh, CNO Canal and the um, somewhere in Ohio we were, can't remember what it's called. Yeah, we're gonna go up let's go up let's go up these stairs and see what we can see from above posters down below says that these canals are 110 feet wide and the huge shipping craters that come through here are 105 feet wide so they have to really so they have five feet so two and a half feet on either side yeah and they have to keep make sure they're even on either side to make sure the water is flowing through properly and can like get around them and stuff yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah, and they've got posters down there that these shipping craters are a thousand four feet long and they've got posters that you can to show you where the bow and the stern are and you can walk from end to end to get a get a sense of how big the ship the shipping craters are. Behind me is Lake Superior and over there is Lake Huron. Huron is considerably lower than Superior. So the boat, so there's one coming from Huron to Superior over there and there's the tour boats over here that are going from Superior to Huron. These ones are going to go down, they're going to drain the water in this side and they're going to raise the water in the other side and that's how you, the boats are going to be at the height they need to go where they're going. It's pretty interesting how they do that and they close the gates on either side so like the water can't get in 
from the higher lake, otherwise it would just all be at the same level. The water is going down. Too big for yours. We gave it back to you because it's too big for it. So the big boat across the way, they said on the intercom, was a uh, ship that carries iron ore. Uh, it looked to me like it was empty because of how high it was sitting above the water. Pretty cool to experience this. It's really neat what, what can be done with just gravity. Uh, there's no pumps or anything at all with the water. It's just all gravity fed, so pretty cool. Now we're going to walk in the visitor center here real quick, maybe see if we can learn some more about this, and uh, then we'll head out. So that iron ore ship we just seen is part of the number that you see behind us. It says this is one of the busiest lock systems in the world with all the iron ore that comes through here. So it's pretty incredible. Down here they have a model of the first locks here at the sea from I think in the 1850s I think is what it says, 1800s. So this is probably very similar to some of the stuff we would have shown you in Pennsylvania and Maryland and Ohio, like the old old canals, stone and wooden structures. Pretty impressive. Uh, and they did that up here too. They're building a new lock across the way, so you've probably seen some of the construction in the videos earlier, but these locks, 95% of the nation's iron ore supply comes through here, which, so that's incredible and they need another lock as a backup to allow maintenance in, in the winter and things like that. But not only are they doing that, but they're producing electricity with hydroelectric plants here at the locks and across the way. It's at 21 feet. The St. Mary's River drops 21 feet between this area, so that kind of answers my question earlier of how high and how far they actually have to raise and lower the boats is 21 feet. So I know I was impressed by the locks, but the real question is, is was Rachel impressed by the locks? Yeah, we managed to spend an hour just, and it didn't feel like an hour, but we spent an hour just watching the boats go through the locks. Yeah, that was a really cool experience. Um, the visitor center was small and it interesting. Was it was informative. It, um, I've been to better visitor centers, but this one was free, so, you know, Take what you can get. Take what you can get. Um, it was very yeah. worthwhile. I mean, we almost thought that this might not be, like, if if it was a choice between this and something else, we almost was going to not do this. But um, today the weather looked like it might rain, so that's how we ended up here today. But uh, definitely worthwhile. I definitely recommend coming. And you could spend more time there, like, if the if you want to see more boats come through. I, I think it's interesting with everyone that comes through. So. Yeah, and they have a schedule. There's a hotline that you can call to check the boat schedule. There's a schedule in the visitor center to check before you go out and stand on the observation deck. Um, there are tours through the locks. We did not do that, but that looks cool. But it is a slow process, the boat's going through the locks, so younger kids might not find it as enjoyable. Uh, also, this is a good place to come if you need fuel. Gas or diesel is cheaper up here. Those things are not very plentiful in the UP. If you need it and you don't want to spend, it was like 50, 60 cents more a gallon over near Taquam, near Root Beer Falls, we call it. And uh, yeah, so don't go buy it there. Buy it, come here, see this, buy that. That's the other reason we came over here was for fuel. Friends, this is Point Iroquois Lighthouse. I'm pretty sure Lake Superior is the one that we're by, but I'm not even 100% sure of that. But yeah, pretty sure this is Lake Superior out here. The lighthouse closes in just a few minutes, so I'm gonna get up there and then we'll talk more when I get back down.
really cool. This is the Point Iroquois Lighthouse, built in 1870, as it says right there. And from here you can see most of Whitefish Bay. There's a shipwreck museum around here too that we're going to try to go to. But, uh, we don't have time today, we got to get back to the campground. It's pretty cool from up top. You can see a barge out on the water, and that's the same barge we've seen coming through the locks. It was in line waiting to get through, so we're kind of going at the same pace that they are. But yeah, it's a great view from here, Lake Superior. This is one of the cooler lighthouses I think that we've been to. Just a really cool looking building and tower and stuff. Very picturesque here in Whitefish Point. So, one of the things about being up here in Lake Michigan area, well this is Superior here, is looking for Petoskey stones along the shores. But, I'm not sure that any of these here are Petoskey stones, but they're really, really pretty nonetheless. And they change color when the, when the water hits them. The shores here in the UP of Michigan and all up the coast is just beautiful. I mean, you can just see it behind me. It's incredibly windy though here today. When I was flying the drone down by the locks, I wasn't able to get it as high as I would like because I was getting high wind warnings. And same here by the lighthouse. And you gotta be careful because there's an airport and down there even worse, restricted space. I didn't want the wind blowing it into some restricted space and me getting in trouble, so. It's a beautiful day though, other than the wind, it's only like 70 degrees out. The kids are having the time of their lives though on this whole vacation, it's, it's been wonderful. To see this series from the beginning, be sure to check out our Michigan RV camping playlist because there's some cool stuff in there that we've already done along the way. So.